a lot of files that are already made inside of Unreal Engine's code that we can use to build simple things that already exist. For the purposes of today, we will be looking deeper into the A character class, which is the parent class of our Dino character that we had built last time. If you want to see the specific header file or the contract that exists for a lot of these files that you want to see inside of Unreal, what you can do, at least inside of Visual Studio, is highlight and then press F12. Once F12 is pressed, it will go and search through all of the files to find the one that matches. So you can see here we now have character.h, and this is the contract or the header file that's going to show what methods and variables exist within this file that we can use. Doing a simple control F search for keyword jump, we're now going to go and look through to see if we have a method that's going to be easy for us to use here. Now, this is of course a spoiler because I've already done this research, but eventually as you scroll through this stuff, and this is what I had to do the first time when I was researching this, you're eventually going to find something called jump. So we can see here that we have a blueprint callable character category jump function that we can use. And then it also has an equivalent takedown function called stop jumping. We're gonna keep that in mind for later. So now that we know what we're looking for for jump, what about for ducking? If I do the same thing in control F search for duck, you'll notice that no results appear. And that's because apparently I chose a weird word. If we instead change this to a synonym, crouch, we're now going to find some stuff that we can use. Namely, we have crouch and uncrouch. A little bit different in terms of the approach they're using in the wordplay, but the same end result. We have starting the crouch and ending the crouch. Now you'll notice that both of these variables do require us to pass in a boolean B client simulation. That's not the most important thing, but we're gonna keep that in mind for when we're actually setting this up. So now that we know the name of the method that we're going to be trying to use, we're going to go back in our code and call this stuff now. So let's navigate back into our C++ file for our character and go down towards our input component setup where we were binding those actions. So now we're gonna make some changes to this. Let's start with our jump action. The first thing I wanna check is to make sure if our trigger is appropriate. So let's just bring up our list of triggers one more time here. And we can see we have things like completed, ongoing, started, triggered, canceled, etc. To go through the important triggers quickly here, started is when we detect that it's just been pressed, triggered is while the button is being held down, and completed is when we detect that it is done being pressed. So with those three main ones taken care of, I do think the one that I'm going to leverage here is triggered. We could also probably get away with started, but I'm gonna use triggered here. And now we're going to change the method that is called away from the personal one that we created called jumping, and we're going to pivot towards an A character method that we found called jump. So now, when our jump action is called by us hitting either the W key or the space bar, it's going to be triggered as long as it's held down, and that's going to cause us to call the jump method that we were just looking at within A character. So now we've done the build up, now we wanna do the take down as well. So to make our lives a little bit easier, I'm just going to copy and paste this line of code. And now I need to change the method we're calling and the trigger event. So since this is the take down method, I'm going to wanna to call this when it's completed. And then I want to call a different method, and this time I'm going to be calling stop jumping. So now our jump is set up where we have it when it's triggered, we're going to jump, and when it's done jumping, we're going to stop jumping. Now we have to do the same thing for crouch. We can keep our custom duck action here, and the main reason we're going to do that is because I don't actually know how to pass in a boolean or other variable into this method. I don't think you can. But we can get around this rather easily by using this custom function that we've already built. So now if we go into our custom function here, what we're gonna do instead is we're going to call a character, which is us, and we're going to call the crouch function, and we're going to pass in false because that's the default value and I see no harm in keeping it that way. So now we've done setup, so now we have to do takedown. So I'm going to copy this line of code and now I need to change our event and our method. Just like before, we're going to do this so that when it's completed, we're going to change this to a method that we're going to create called stop duck. Now, obviously this thing hates us right now because we actually haven't created a method called stop duck yet. So let's do that now. Into the header file we go, we can get rid of jumping while we're here and we're going to create a new void method called stop duck. And now I can do my alt enter thing and create the definition inside the C++ file. 
and we can delete jumping from the C++ file because it's now redundant. Inside of stop duck, we can now go and do the same thing, but in the backwards, where we're going to call a character dot uncrouch, and we're going to pass in false again. So now that our code backbone is complete for this, we're going to go into blueprint and make the finishing touches to make sure that everything will work as expected. So I'm going to save everything here, and then I'm going to go back into my project and I'm going to compile. So with the success there, we're now going to go into the blueprint that we've created last time that we called our my dino character. We're now going to discuss relevant settings that we're going to use. The first setting we need to discuss is gravity. We do like gravity and it's very important to jump with gravity on, otherwise things get wonky really fast. So if I search for gravity on the side here, we can see that my mesh and my capsule component both have gravity enabled and the gravity scale is set to one times. That's fine, we can adjust that later. Next, we're going to look at a setting called physics simulation. If I search for physics, you can see here that simulate physics is off on the mesh and it's off on the capsule component. This is necessary. For whatever reason, physics simulation has to be off in order for us to use the A character methods to jump and crouch. Don't ask why, I don't know. And then the last thing we're going to do here just to make our lives and testing easier is we're going to look for the setting called hidden in game. And we're going to find our capsule component which is currently hidden in game and we're going to uncheck this so we can see our capsule component when we're doing testing. So now if I compile and save this as well, we're going to be able to hit play here and now we have our character with our capsule showing. If I enter into the game by clicking on the screen and then I hit down, we can see we are getting a log where it's saying that our character is trying to crouch but crouching is actually disabled on the character. What the heck does that mean? So let's go back into our blueprint and let's just look generically for something called crouch. So we can see here we have crouching half height, but there's actually a movement capability that is super important for us to enable. It's called can crouch. So right now we can see that we've actually said we can't crouch, don't let it happen. So let's turn this on so that our character is allowed to crouch. Now, I don't know if there's an equivalent thing that exists for jump, so let's see if that does exist. It does, but we've already set up so that we can jump, so that's fine. So now we've actually said that our character is allowed to crouch and our character is allowed to jump. So let's jump back into play one more time. Let's hop in. Let's bring up our output log just in case there's another error that shows up and let's hit down. And you can see here that the capsule component is shrinking and cutting itself in half. This is a crouch, this is what we want. Again, we haven't done the animations yet. That's gonna come in the future. But for right now, for collisions sake, everything is working as expected. This is great. And what happens if I hit jump? Our character does a little bunny hop. Now this jump isn't very strong and I can also crouch while I'm in the air, which we really don't want to happen. So let's start adjusting these things. Let's start with this crouching in the air nonsense. Let's go back into our code. And here what we're going to do is we're basically going to adjust our duck method and give it some logic so that it doesn't always duck when we press the button. I'm gonna create an if statement that says if our character is allowed to jump. Now, I know there's gotta be a pre-built method for this, and I'm going to cheat and say that I've already done my research and say that if we can jump, then we're going to want to crouch with our character. Can jump is a method that's detecting if our character is allowed to jump. Our character is only allowed to jump if they're currently on the ground. So it makes sense for us to only want to crouch if we're also on the ground. So if our character can jump, our character is going to be allowed to start crouching. We don't actually need to make any changes to the stop duck because it doesn't matter. That's only called once we're done ducking. So let's save this here and compile our changes inside of our project. And with a successful creation, let's just show that this works now. So I'm going to go into the game. I'm going to jump and then try and duck. And we can see that doesn't work. That's perfect. One of our things has been fixed. So now to adjust our jump, we could do this in code, but it's way easier to do in Blueprint. Let's go into the character movement component of our blueprint, which actually is a reference to all of the variables and everything that we need and have been using thus far. And now we can see there's a whole bunch of things that we can adjust. Gravity scale that we touched on before, which will directly impact how high everything jumps. But we can also look at the crouching half height, for instance. This dictates how small our collision gets when we crouch. As we scroll down, there's actually an entire section that's dedicated to jumping and falling. So if we go over this variable, for instance, this says that we have the initial velocity when we are jumping, how fast we're braking, how much control we have in the air, all of this dictates how we jump. 
we're going to care a lot about our jump z velocity here. Let's see what happens when I triple this and make this a nice 1600. I guess that's times 4, but whatever, I'm not here to do math. Let's compile and save that, and then minimize this. And then let's hit play and see what we've done. When I hit up now, we can see that I'm jumping to the moon. So we want to go somewhere between 400 and 1600. And this is where it comes into experimentation and you figuring out what exactly you want to go down in your project. So let's chop this down a little further because we do want them to be floaty. The dinosaur in the, in the actual game is very floaty, but we do not want them to be super floaty. And that looks appropriate enough where they're staying in the air, they're jumping relatively high, but they're not in the air for an ungodly amount of time. And that is how we can use a character functions or functions that already exist in Unreal to achieve certain goals. Be on the lookout for stuff like this as you're making your own projects because there is a lot of pre-built functionality that Unreal has already done the work to create. In our next lecture, we will be going and creating the enemy that is going to be running at our player, and we're going to talk about how we can make that increase in speed over time. Have a great day, and I'll see you there.